Hey guys, so welcome back to Wild and Basic. So today is another solo episode. So we are going to be talking about FOMO. I have definitely talked about this definitely somewhere. I cannot remember on YouTube or I cannot, I don't know if I, if this was actually on the podcast. I quite frankly can't recall. <laughs> this is like the funniest thing about like having like social like accounts on a bunch of social but also like on uh, podcasts as well because so much of the content gets like mixed up. I cannot recall but I just feel like this is going to be like a different perspective even if I made an episode about that because there's only just so many topics that I can talk about but I definitely want to talk about it again and maybe I feel like this would be like a fresh perspective and also on top of it the reason I want to talk about it is because this past weekend uh, was Coachella week one and obviously a lot of us probably felt like you know like missing out like fear of missing out I kind of felt it in some ways not as much as I used to I would say like I remember previous years I was like really like oh my god I need to be there I want to be there I was trying so hard but I feel like after the pandemic just kind of like I was like oh well it is what it is we're gonna get into it in a little bit but I just want to say like that is the topic for today so it's gonna be a very interesting topic if you don't know what FOMO means don't know how gets in the way with so many things especially in our social circle i feel like this would be something interesting to talk about so i should get i think get into it but before that let me let me talk about updates because we have some cool <laughs> updates well actually i don't know if it's a cool update but it's an update that like interesting so yeah let me tell you guys about it I I was actually thinking about like I'm like maybe I should just like make a YouTube video about it and pull that like old YouTube technique and clickbait be like I crashed my Tesla <laughs> was the thumbnail <laughs> okay I did not crash my Tesla but I did scratch my Tesla it happened at a parking garage and it was. The thing is, it was so funny how it happened. It, actually, that's not really funny. Is it? It's kind of funny because this is the parking structure that I use every day. It's literally the parking garage that I park. It's inside my building. So that's what I'm trying to say. It's literally something that I use almost every single day. So the fact that it happened there, very, very... Uh, I don't know, surprising. I thought it would be anywhere else, literally anywhere else but there, but that's why it was just so surprising. So long story short, this is how it happened. Usually, you know, like, because it has multiple floors of the garage, there is like, you know, it loops around and there's the corner that you have to make a turn. And usually this, these corners, this parking structure, like many others, some of the like old ones or even new ones to just save space, it's two-way, like the same route, but it's two-way. So in the edge, in the corner, I guess, there is like the car that goes up, the car goes down. Because it's kind of tight, not, it's very rare that two cars can go at the same time. Very rare. It just, it, it won't be possible. So usually uh, you have to wait for the car to go or you have to back out so you can give them space. So this time around, there was this SUV in front of me coming, like going up and I was going down and I was trying to give her as much space as possible. As I was trying to do that, I, I guess gave her so much space, but I did not give myself enough space. I was literally just like almost out. I scratched, also a little dented my rear passenger door. So yeah, Smokey is injured. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know where we're going with this. Anyways, I'm just saying, so it was like, it, it, it broke my heart, like it really did. I feel like people say that a lot, like especially if it's a new car, if it's your first car, you obviously have a lot of emotional feelings towards it, which I, I clearly do. 
So yeah, it was. I was heartbroken. Even the girl, she was like, oh my god, are you okay? I was like, no. <laughs> do you think I'm okay? Like, do I look okay? I'm not. I was... I was just so ups like I was so in shock because I was so confident that I I was good. Again, I'm not trying to I'm taking the full blame for it. I should learn my lesson. It's a very good lesson to use my mirrors. But I will say this. Don't come at me, Tesla. But I'm gonna say this. Tesla is a great car. Tech wise, it's an amazing car. Amazing. Absolutely amazing, but there are times that I feel like it makes you so lazy and also there are times that it doesn't actually show you what it does, needs to show because imagine usually it records everything and I mean everything whenever I park it records it it didn't even record this because I guess it didn't think that like it was a collision or something and on top of it usually when I'm even going through drive through you know like those tight drive through like Starbucks drive throughs most of them are so fucking tight it's always beeping because I have these sensors on. It's like, oh my god, am I close? Am I not close? Am I? This one, it didn't even beep for a second. So I was very surprised that it even happened because usually my sensors are like, I, they're pretty strong. Like, I'm always hearing it, and if it is so close, it even tells me it shows in the camera. It sh I mean, it shows in even the screen that, like, red, it's, you're too close. This didn't even show that, so I was very surprised. That's why I was like, oh, I'm good. I didn't mean to check my mirrors, I'm good. So, I was not good, you know. I was like, I got this. I didn't, I did not. So, uh, yeah, I, rely, I, I, I realized this too, and my sister also says it too, and she was like, true. I just rely way too much on technology, because I just, I have to admire like the features and everything comes with it. But this is just a lesson to put it out there, that also check don't like rely on technology too much seriously because i feel like that is something that happens a lot not just with tesla i'm not even trying to say like we have gotten so used to so many things because of technology i mean don't get me wrong it makes our life so much easier but i feel like it also gets to a point that it makes us super lazy like i feel like at this point i have come to a place that I'm not even responding to some of my own emails because of AI. I literally ask AI to write emails for me and I just copy and paste it. One might call that lazy. Someone might call smart. Someone might call it maybe not smart, efficient, more efficient. So I feel like that could be it. So yeah, like that's what I do. Anyways, so back to my point, what I'm trying to say is that like, we rely too much on technology, and in this in this case, I did, because <laughs> I was I thought I was good. That's why I don't check my mirrors. But also with Tesla, yes, I try to check my mirrors often. But because I have cameras and I have sensors, sometimes I I nine out of ten I don't need to. Hence, it's a bad habit. Hence, sometimes I think about like, oh my god, if I ever to rent another car, it's such a different experience to learn. Hence, I feel like sometimes driving a Tesla. <sighs> It's like double-edged sword. It has so many great things, but also it makes you super lazy that if you get into another car and start driving it, you're gonna be like, what the hell is this? No, seriously, like what the hell is this? Anyways, I have already filed a claim with my insurance. I will have to deal with that. It turns out I have to pay my deductible. Love that for me. This month has been a big learning experience. Amount of money I have been paying for taxes, for this, that I had to pay for a car inspection and shit. It has been a lot. It truly has been a lot. I don't even want to check my bank account. I don't even want to check my credit card statements. I just want this month to be over. So, by April, please don't ever come back. Well, until next year, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, that was very inspiring, I'm sure. Update. Hope you guys loved it. <laughs> Anyways, now let's get on to today's episode and talk about FOMO. I think first we should talk about why FOMO happens. I think that's like one of the most important things to just like mention in the beginning. I think there are definitely so many reasons that might happen, but I kind of narrowed it down to like three like most 
common reasons that happens. I think the biggest one, let's start with that, is social comparison. This happens because like, you know, we see friends or acquaintances and like their exciting lives, exciting job and like whatever they're doing and kind of feel like we are missing out on something uh, and if you are not doing the same, which is a very common one. And I feel like this is the one that cause most problems because we start to compare ourselves to them and thinking like why we are not doing that or maybe we should have done something like that. Like you kind of feel like, oh my God, like that could have been fun for me or I could have got something like that. Or that would have helped me out. I don't know. I feel like there's so many things that kind of, that might come up because of it. That's why I feel like that overall comparison is such a it's such a toxic thing to do. And I've learned this the hard way. And when I was like, I feel like first starting like my career on social media, and like I did that way too much. I was like looking at so many other profiles. Not necessarily that they were even similar like mine, but it was just like I was looking at them like, oh, I could do better, I could take better pictures, or I had to work on my body so I can look better. There are like so many things that could come up, and that's just overall comparison, but I feel like this FOMO is that like you feel like, oh, they went to this uh, event, you didn't go. They did this, you didn't do it. It's like you didn't get this, something like that. Like you start internalizing it, hence it becomes super super toxic that's why i feel like social comparison is the biggest one out of all three that i'm going to mention but that one is like i feel like this one is the one that causes a lot of issues with so many people the second one is fear of regret i think this is something that like we feel like oh like if uh, because we didn't go we are going to miss out on opportunities or experience that might contribute so much in our lives and I feel like to an extent that could be true could be but there's a high chance that it might not be I mean as much as I don't believe in like what is meant for you will be there for you I mean I don't know I feel like sometimes I believe that sometimes I don't <laughs> Like, I, I won't be that person be like oh my god yeah like I believe in law of attraction to an extent, yes, but if I said 100%, probably not. I would be lying. But I feel like if that's an opportunity that you think that that would have helped you so much, then yeah, I can see like why that's important for you and why you think that you should have been there. But I feel like at the same time, you have to think about that regret, like our lives full of regrets. I feel like we are going to have so many regrets in our lives. Good ones, uh, bad ones. It's like that, like thinking like, oh, this could have been a big opportunity or like I did something that I should have not done because it was just not worth it. So I feel like that kind of comes and goes. You shouldn't think too much about it overall. But that's like the second reason I'm just trying to mention. So third one, this one is kind of like the vague one, but I feel like I should put it out there because it kind of makes sense. In certain ways but it's not like something happens it's not something super super common as like social one social comparison one uncertainty I think that we are not sure what's going on we might feel like we are missing out on things we are thinking like oh I am at this stage of my life what if I am missing out on something that I am supposed to be doing again sounds super vague but I feel like that is something that some of us experience too like career-wise, relationship-wise, uh, family-wise, you know, so many, it could be so many reasons. So I feel like we experience this quite a lot, thinking that, oh, like, maybe I missed out on certain things. Maybe I missed out on opportunities. I feel like the biggest example would be like, oh, people my age, they have a house. I don't. Or people my age, I don't know, like... Some of them are dating, or some of them are married, some of them have kids. Again, this is just a generalization. I'm not saying that uh, people want that necessarily. But, like, that's kind of a FOMO. 
I feel like sometimes we don't think like that, but I feel like it is kind of a FOMO because you kind of assume that you're like, I wish I had that, or maybe I wish I had that. But I feel like this last thing that I'm saying, the uncertainty one, I think this is different for everyone because everyone has a different journey. Just because someone had, I don't know, like built their business and they're doing so well, they're successful, doesn't mean that that will be the journey for you or that you will be happy with that. It just doesn't mean that like you missed out. I feel like we think like that, but like, would you have been happy if you did that? Like, I'm not sure, right? Or like if someone uh, married or someone had a house, it's like, would you have been happy if you had the house? You don't know for sure, you know what I mean? I feel like sometimes I thought about that before. I feel like now that I'm thinking about it more, that like, oh, like having a house is actually a lot of responsibility. Am I ready for that? Like, you have to like be a bit realistic about those things. I feel like we, in our lives, I feel like we've owned so many things. <laughs> and I feel like as a human being, we always have like these things that we want. Like we want one thing, then we want something else, and something else, and something else. It just like keeps going on and on and on. It just never ends. I remember this from uh, like when I was very little, like when I was I think maybe maybe at ten or twelve. I wanted this the this toy. It was like a car, you know, that you can use with remote control and you can move it around. But like small cars, one of those like the the cars that were like kind of like big but not, not so big but you can use them as a remote control and they had like batteries and everything it was almost like having a drone but like car drone it was kind of very cool if you're into cars you know what i'm talking about anyways i always wanted one of those but they were so expensive at the time and i remember i saved all of my money and i remember i asked some money from like uh from my aunt or i think it was I don't know, from my cousin, I don't remember who it was, but I, I needed some extra money. Then when I, uh, before I was getting it, I was like, I just want this and I don't want anything else. Like I always remember I would see these people that having that or people using that or uh, being advertised, I, I always said like, oh, I wish I had that. I had the biggest FOMO. And I was like, if I had that, I, won't, I wouldn't want anything else. And after I had that, getting it, using it, and like, I don't know, it was fun for a while. Then afterwards, it's like, I moved on to something else. So I feel like it's kind of like that. Like, you kind, you always like, say that like, I wish I had that. Then when you have it, you're like, okay, move on to next. Because FOMO is something that like, happens in the moment. It is all, it is such an impulsive feeling it's not something that stays with you for a long period of time i feel like it's not something super deep in my perspective i'm not sure what other people would say but in my perspective i don't think it's something super deep i think it's just a matter of time it's the moment that happens yeah you might uh, feel bad for a while for a bit not even a while then afterwards you're like back to whatever you are doing and that's why i want to end it with this why the FOMO happens. Now let's talk about how to stop uh, having fear of missing out because I don't think it's healthy to have that every stage of our lives because I think some things could be healthy in a way that you can use that FOMO as your motivation to do better in life and I think that's kind of what I want to focus on on today's episode because I think there are so many things happens in our lives that might not necessarily be, I don't know, good for us or good overall. But I feel like if you know, if you find a way to somehow channel that into something positive or something that we can use for our growth, that is something more important and that's why I want to get into. So the first one that I would say is practicing mindfulness. I think what comes to that is like essentially practicing how to be present in the moment. I think this is super hard because nowadays, especially like I feel like because of how everything it is nowadays, social media and everything so quickly, it is so hard to be present in the moment. 
I feel like you constantly feel like you are missing out on events, activities, friends, I don't know, something. But I feel like it is important to just like look at yourself and look at what you're doing at the moment. You're like, this is what I got. You cannot think about the future or what's, what you might be missing. It's important to think about like what I'm, what I'm doing right now and what is something important to me that I should be focusing on. Again, it's very easier to said than done because, you know, a lot of things are like that in life. But I feel like it is important to just like focus on what is like what you're working on right now. Because sometimes like a couple things. I would say this was like more like my experience and maybe that would make sense for some of you guys. That like, oh, like let's just say if I'm working with a brand right now and like I'm like trying to shoot the content or editing the content or whatever. Then all of a sudden if I'm thinking like, oh my god, I wish I was working with this brand or I was making this much money with this brand or something like that. I mean, yes, that sounds nice, but at the same time, it's like, focus on what you are doing right now. I feel like we kind of don't let our current or present moment have its own moment. We kind of like move on so quickly, we are like, okay, did this. Let me just finish it. Let me just be done with it. But sometimes we don't even let it breathe. Like let, like let it have it this moment. We never let that happen. I think it's just mainly because of how everything is so fast, quick, so quick these days, and how everything is just like keeps happening, like one after another. It is so for us to just like focus on just our present and just think about how we can actually use that in the moment without just like be like what I might be missing out on like focus what you have you've got right now it's like this it's like you're eating like dinner no no you're having like breakfast you're already like what am I gonna eat for dinner I mean yeah it's good to think about your dinners in advance but at the same time it's like finish your breakfast first that's what I mean I feel like it is very hard Obviously, because I, I feel like, especially for me, because I love to have some sort of a plan, depending on the occasion, when I don't have it, it kind of freaks me out. But then I'm learning that, like, it is important to just, like, focus on the present. And because sometimes when you plan too much ahead, and when that plan doesn't really work out, or when you think that that might happen, and it doesn't happen, you actually freak out. And it's just not healthy. Second, this kind of connects to what I was saying, is that reflecting on your priorities. I think it is super important to just emphasize what is more important for you. I think sometimes because of the society, because of our friend group, or because of our family, because of our background, sometimes we think that there are some things that are important because of what's shaped around us, what shapes us. But then you have to really think about like, is this something important for me? Because don't feel like you are missing out on something and then you're like, actually, that's not really my priority right now. Like, think about that. There are sometimes I thought about this uh, in a way that not just like feel, what's the, what would be the best word for it then? that I have maybe like not gone to an event or didn't get the invitation yeah I could be like sour about it I could be like oh okay like it's fine like I didn't get invited it's cool whatever but then there are times that I have like looked at those events and I'm like would you have had a good time if I went to this event if I was to get invited I mean, sometimes I'm like, okay, maybe, because I, I tend to just, like, fake so many times. I feel like I am so good at pretending so many times in social occasions that I'm totally fine or, like, I'm having the best time of my life. Sometimes it's really actually hard for me to tell. It's like, if I'm having a good time or I'm just pretending, it's hard for me to tell. 
But <laughs> business perspective, I think about it, I'm like, would it have made sense for me, priority-wise? Sometimes I'm like, mm, not necessarily. Yes, it looks like a cool event, but like, would I have made any business connections that were relevant for me? I'm like, not necessarily. There are times that actually that has happened uh, in New York many times. Not to bash anyone again, there was a group of people that used to remind me, I mean, it was like a PR and the other companies, like no, no bad blood or anything, but they used to invite me to events that like, yeah, it was fun in a sense, but like all the people around it is like, not necessarily someone I would hang out with. I mean, they seem like cool people, but it wasn't like close to my niche per se. And they were much older than me. Again, nothing wrong with that. But I just feel like it's such a different, it was such a different dynamic. And there are a couple times when I saw them like going to other events and, and I was kind of like feeling like, oh, I did not get the invitation. It's fine. And we have a lot of mutuals too. But I'm like, oh, it's okay. Then I realized I'm like, even if I went, it's like, I literally have nothing common with these women who are like in their 40s. Again, nothing wrong with that. It's just more that like, I'm like, I, I don't know how I can make that connection. If we were in a similar niche, maybe that would be it. But some of them are like, in completely different category and everything so I'm like oh yeah it's okay I did not get the invitation it's fine it was like it, I thought like maybe we were somewhat connected but I'm like even if I got the invitation and I went it's like would I have made any connections maybe not or would I have made any connections that were useful for me probably not hence priorities I know it's like <laughs> I went around quite a lot, but I'm just trying to say like sometimes we try to justify so many things to just to have that moment and thinking like that would have been like, I don't know, good for us. But think about would it have been important for you, for yourself, for your career. It doesn't have to be necessarily a career or your for your growth. If it is not, don't I think like sometimes be overcompensated and just don't. Like it really is not worth that having FOMO really isn't. Third, setting boundaries. This one is actually kind of important uh, in a sense that like priorities is one thing, but like boundaries it comes to like, where does the FOMO come from? I feel like, I don't know how it was happening in the past before, but nowadays I feel like the main, of it, main uh, source of it is social media. That's where the FOMO comes in. It's like, you know, like how Coachella happened recently or like how the other stuff happens or whatever. You find it through social media first. Then you kind of like have this moment that you're like, oh, I missed out. I did this. It's like, it's that. It is super toxic regardless of it. Like regardless if it is like about like social media itself or like the event itself. But overall, it's good to set boundaries regardless of having FOMO or not because I learned this the hard way too just like I feel like as someone who spends a lot of their time on social media for work because I have to constantly check content constantly check to see what is trending what's not working what is working so I can like fix my content around that or work, make content around that and sometimes like that I'm like Am I scrolling or am I looking at the content? Like sometimes I miss that. Then I end up like going down the spiral and like checking people's content, looking at other things and I'm just kind of like losing it. Then I'm like, oh, I didn't go this. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I missed out on this festival. I missed out on this event or whatever. It happens. But if you make it very, if you have a strategy behind that and like only spend a certain amount of time just for that purpose. I mean, I use it for business, obviously, but for some people, it's like if you're just using it for entertainment, set some boundaries because it's really, really not healthy to be constantly stimulated by content on social media overall. But also, more you spend time on it, more you're gonna have like, oh, this friend of mine was just at the beach. This friend of mine was just at the uh, on vacation, this friend of mine was like doing this. It's like you're gonna have to start having all these moments. It's like I am just sitting in my home uh, in my computer recording a podcast, <laughs> something like that. I'm just saying. I feel like that that shit just comes up. But if you didn't check social media that day, you would have been fine. Just saying. So it is important to just like 
have some boundaries around that because first of all that's overall good for your mental health but it's also good for your own growth because we have to find a way to just like I don't know like find ourselves without social media I mean don't get me wrong I love everything that social media has, has to offer but it can also be a place that that could be super super toxic so that's one of the things that comes out of it, FOMO so fourth focusing on gratitude gratitude is something that I feel like we should be thinking about overall like not just even in the context of FOMO but I feel like it's also something to think about in this context because we always feel like oh like I uh, I wish I had that or I didn't have that you're always like thinking about like what is what is something that you don't have right that's what FOMO is but I feel like then you should also think about like what you didn't have earlier like in the past and now you have it I think about that all the time in my life to have that gratitude for myself and how much I have accomplished because I think it's so hard to kind of underestimate your accomplishments and I think that is so so important to just remind yourself all the time so that you have that gratitude in yourself like many times in my life I never thought I would be where I am right now like I have to be completely honest I never thought I would be here in this stage I didn't even think I would make it this far honestly <laughs> just saying uh, like I remember like for many years I was like oh my god I wanted a Tesla I really wanted that car but I never thought that I would be able to afford it at I think I got it when I was 26 or something when I or had the order or something I'm just saying it was like I never thought I that would happen to me but it did so I'm just saying like I feel like I never expected that 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 would happen to me but now that I have it it's like wow I, I have to at least like have this gratitude for myself that like I worked so hard to make that happen I worked on my credit I, I worked on being an adult like I remember the first time I this is super embarrassing and I feel like I have mentioned this somewhere before uh, there was uh, my first time I think it was right out of college I don't know if it was right out of college no it was right out of I, as I was in uh, grad school I think my first year or something and I was just like oh maybe it would be actually make sense for me to get a Tesla at that time I was still working on my credit my credit was not great and obviously I, I didn't I wasn't making a lot of money either because even though I had the the content creation on the side but I was still at school so it was it wasn't like I was doing full-time so it was very hard when I applied the Tesla financing and everything I got rejected all these places because I wanted to do a lease at first but I got rejected no one gave me a loan no one did anything so I had to you know they had to uh, like refund my deposit thank god now they don't but that's what happened so it was very embarrassing and it, it, it literally crushed me I remember I cried for like a day <laughs> because I was like oh like that was that was super embarrassing because I you know like once you think that like you're placing the order you're like oh I'm gonna get it it's fine then you're like oh actually it turns out you don't have good in it, like credit or whatever and you got denied so it was pretty embarrassing but I feel like that was such a good lesson for me to learn and I use that for as a motivation so I can do better in the future and get the car that I want and I did that like after a couple of years I was able to get the Tesla by myself so I was very happy about that but I'm just putting it out there that like I feel like now I'm trying to be uh, grateful for what I have because yes in, now I want maybe another Tesla or I want maybe a house but I'm trying to be so grateful for the apartment that I have that I love uh, the place that I live in the car I have I feel like it's important to have these uh, moments because I feel like sometimes we never think about this we never just like stop for a second and just be grateful for what we have we are constantly thinking about what we don't have and that's just not healthy at all so I feel like it is important to just practice the gratitude okay the next this is engaging engaging in activities that you actually enjoy 
I think sometimes we are thinking about like, oh, like, I thought this is something that I would like or when you see it on social media or other places. But you have to actually think about like, what is something that you're enjoying that you want to do? Just because, I don't know, someone is riding a jet ski or someone is, a, I don't know, on a horse. I don't know, someone is doing something else. Does that make sense for you? I used to think this, like when I was in college, I did so many activities. I joined so many clubs and everything because I did not have that kind of opportunity when I was in high school because, I, again, I was so busy with like studying for SATs, studying for getting to college and everything. I didn't have any spare time for any extracurricular activities. So in college, I literally tried so many things. I tried dance. I was always in the swim team. I tried, like, uh, what was the word for it? Uh, debate team. Oh, I don't know. I tried creative writing. I tried so many, like, clubs and everything. And that kind of helped me realize, because I remember I would look at, like, some people's social media and stuff or be like, oh, I wish I, I got that or I did that, right? Then after doing those activities and trying them out for a bit, I even did track, I think, like, like a trial, but then I realized, like, I don't like it. <laughs> but I remember a couple times I was just kind of like, oh, I, I wish I did track. Then I tried and I'm like, oh, it's not for me. But I'm so glad I did it because now I literally have not even a bit of FOMO when it comes to stuff like that because I'm like, I did it actually, I'm good. Seriously. Like, I remember when I was in high school, I think, even... I mean, because I, we did uh, swimming for a while, but I was never like in a full team per se. It was kind of like a practice. It wasn't like a NCAA, it wasn't like a, a league or something. It wasn't like anything serious. It was kind of like practice. So I always wanted to be in a team. So I'm so glad I got that experience in college to find out that like, oh my God, okay. like. Is this for me? I'm not sure, but I'm so glad I did it and I got it out of my system. Now I, I, I literally never have one single FOMO when it comes to that. I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, it's fine. I tried it, it's good, I got it out of my system. That's why I feel like it's good to know, kind of experience those things. So after you experience something, you're never going to have that FOMO because you know how that activity, that experience made you feel like. Even if you see it on social media and you think about like, I wish I did that, you're like, actually I did that, I don't like it. I know this is not something that everyone can do and I'm so, so grateful that I had all these experiences, but I would recommend doing that. Sometimes whenever you have a FOMO, right, and you feel like someone did that and like you haven't done that, if you can, obviously, try that. You're gonna see if that's something you're interested in at all. If, you're, then if you don't like it, next time you see that on social media or in real life, they're like, actually, I don't like it. There are like many times, I think, another thing, this is not an activity per se, but kind of an activity, like going to some restaurants, right? I remember there are many times that there were some just restaurants that a couple of my friends would go to and I'd never been to, and they would always post about it and stuff, and I'd be like, oh my god, like... I'm jealous, I wish I was there, or whatever, right? Then, <laughs> I remember, uh, like, a while after, I went there with my sister or so. With my sister, I think. I don't remember if it was my dad, too. But anyways, we tried. I didn't even like the restaurant either. But I'm like, actually, I'm so glad I was not there. Like, I'm so, And this restaurant was super, super expensive. So I'm like, first, I did not like it. And second, it was just very very pricey but i'm just saying you, you see my point right i'm like you don't have to be part of every activity because that might not be something you actually enjoy so really think about what is something you might enjoy or if you're curious about it just try it lastly connecting with others i think instead of focusing on who you might be connecting in the future which is still important to think about you should really think about who you are connecting now like with your friends with your family i don't know like other people around you really really focus on that crowd because i think it is important to focus on what you currently have as i was mentioning from the very beginning that presence 
Uh, and that comes to like being with others, like connecting with others. Because I think when you connect with others and I don't know, whatever activities you end up doing or even just talking, that fulfills that hole or whatever FOMO made you feel like. Because again, I still believe that FOMO is something super impulsive. It's not a feeling that's so deep that that's gonna stay with you for a while. It's something that just happens in the moment. And I feel like when you connect with others, when you even have that kind of conversation with others, I'm telling you, you you're gonna feel like you're gonna feel so much better about it. I, I have remembered this many times. Like even that, I think there are times that like I have talked about like maybe not going to Coachella or like not doing that or a bunch of other things with some uh, friends or some family that it made me actually feel better about it because I'm like nah actually I don't feel so bad I'm like is this even important for me did this like did this like does this make even sense for me it makes me actually feel so much better I'm like that I instead of just doing that I am connecting with people that I want because I think as much as we think that there's always something that we might be missing out on and the truth is most likely we are like I feel like that's just what it is it's like we we might be constantly missing out on something but it is important to just like pick and choose what is something that is important for you to not miss it is definitely hard but I feel like that is the point of life like we make choices that we might not necessarily be proud of, then we regret them. But then maybe next choice we make, we are smarter because we already made that choice and we know what it's not to do, at least. <laughs> anyway, on that note, I'm going to conclude this episode. I hope you guys like this episode. If you do, please don't forget to rate us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll see you guys next week with another episode.